greetings, and welcome back, gentles and ladies, men, to the fantastic coming-of-age classic Spiral Enter the Dragonfly, the video game that... The video game that made... Uh, the video game that is so amazing that I can't think of anything to say about it. Because it's, it's just mind-blowingly amazing. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, now that we're back for another part, I think it's time we discuss the story just a little bit more. Which I keep trying to get at, but then something interrupts me, you know? Um, we'll go help George Bush Farmer in just a minute. Uh, by the way, the George Bush Farmers in this level are are actually based on NPCs from Year of the Dragon. Like, uh, if you can think back to that one uh, mission in Year of the Dragon in, uh, God, what was it called? Country Speedway? Uh, Hunter was flying around in a jetpack and shooting space sheep. Hey, you're Spyro, ain't you? Glad to meet you. Have you seen any of my cows? Uh, so, there is a mission to help that guy, but it doesn't unlock until you beat the level. You know, go go in a full circle, so to speak. And the level and the design, like kind of the design philosophy, like if you think back to my Spyro 3 playthrough. Uh, Spyro 3, all the levels were designed kind of like a giant donut. And that is very much the case for Year of the Dragonfly as well, except that giant, the emphasis on the giant part. Uh, because the levels do go on for quite a bit longer, you know, just in terms of sheer size. Uh, but they still loop around, so when you get to the end, it drops you off back at the beginning, and then you go from there. Uh, so I am glad that they stuck with that, if they were gonna make bigger levels, and they didn't, you know, kind of keep the Spyro 1 and 2 kind of design philosophy for that. Uh, it just makes the, the levels easier to... Uh, it just makes the levels um, easier to backtrack through if you miss something, which can happen. Uh, because, once again, there's no gem finder right off the bat, you do have to unlock it, and you unlock it by beating the final boss. And, um, so yeah, so... If you can't find something, everything right away, then you're gonna have to wait until afterwards to get it, is the point. Uh, so... You do want to be careful, so is if we weren't going to have Treasure Finder right away, I'm glad that they at least were nice enough to, you know, make the levels easy to navigate, so to speak. Or, what I mean is, you know, have them loop so that you can go forwards and backwards through the level to find things you missed and whatnot. Ooh. Um, there's a dragonfly up here. Just grab this ladder here. And shoot out bubble breath. So, like, sometimes the dragonflies will move all around, and sometimes they'll just sit Sometimes they'll just sit still and do nothing until you catch them, so... It really depends on the level. Um, so, yeah. Um, so... Um, yeah, so the plot. Uh, Ripto is back, and some of you might be like, Wait a minute, Ripto died in the second game, why is he here? Well, if you get all the skill points and beat the game, there's an epilogue in Spyro 2. And if you go to the very last page of one of the last few pages of the Spyro 2 epilogue, you will find that Ripto actually ended up get, going back to the Dragon Realms with Spyro, uh, where the with the Elder Dragons started playing with him like a toy. So that is, that is something that happened. And then if you look at the epilogue from Spyro 3, it shows that Nasty Nork and Ripto hold a summit to discuss the Spyro problem. Uh, and the original plot of this game was going to be Nasty Nork and Ripto teaming up to take revenge on Spyro. Uh, but Nasty Nork ended up getting cut and then it was just Ripto. And then Nasty Nork ended up showing up again in Hero's Tale after this, so... Uh, so they kind of split that idea into two games, so to speak. Uh, Nasty Nork is not the main baddie of, of Hero's Tale, but he does show up for the first act, and, you know, they reference the fact that he was defeated before. Uh, which is the only effort, uh, by Hero's Tale to acknowledge continuity, because otherwise it just acts, just kind of retcons everything. Like, the, like, it also takes place in the Dragon Realms, even though it looks nothing like the first game. By the way, uh, I love how the animations fuck up. Because it's funny. That's that's my reasoning. Okay, I just want to do this forever. You know, 
Because, you know, this is kind of Sonic Adventure tier glitch, you know, where it's like, haha, it's funny. It shouldn't happen. But at the same time, it's not like game breaking or anything. It's not like interrupting my ability to play the game when that animation glitch happens. So it's like, eh, whatever. And here we can see the 60 frames is, you know, working for us here, so. And I do find that the game is consistent, has a consistently higher frame rate on GameCube compared to PS2. With PS2, everything is like below 30 for the entire time. Whereas, uh, at least from what little I played, may, I, I'm, I'm sure it depends on the level, but, you know, comparatively speaking, I, I found that the, uh, the frame rate was better here. And, uh, like I said, if you're gonna have a low frame rate, it might as well be progressive, you know? So that you aren't getting, like, half of a frame, and then a bunch of skips, you know? So that if it drops a frame, it's not as jarring. So, you know, technically the GameCube version does not support progressive scan right out of the box, but you know what I'm saying. This is still the better alternative for my sake, and... I, I might have played this in 4DI, Bob deinterlaced, but this isn't a review, this is a playthrough. I just wanted to make it easier on myself to look at this, because fuck 4DI. It should... Video games should never have been rendered in 4DI. They might as well have just made it all 240p instead. I don't know, I'm... You guys know where I'm at on, on 4DI, but... You know, and I know why 40i was a thing, because that's just how CRTs were, but... And to be fair, this game actually doesn't look too shabby on, on a CRT. Like, it looks a lot crisper on a CRT, I think is what I'm trying to say, so... And 40i, I mean, so... But it's just like, 480i has not aged well at all. It's one of those things where it's just like, as necessary as it was at the time... How did I do that? I, I totally cheesed the game just now. Uh, which is just another reason why it's so awesome. Can I get a high five? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I'm doing here, because I've just been blab blabbing away all this time. I think there was another area back here that I kind of skipped over, so I'm gonna, we're going to go back real quick uh, before I have 20 people in the comments telling me to go back. Oh, that's right, there's a gate up there. And I jumped up onto that platform, so we're probably good for now. We'll go back and do the mini games later because you know. Ah, uh, but yes, Ripto is back, and he's stronger than ever, which is one of my favorite villain lines full time. My God, Greg Berger's performance in this game is just fantastic. Like just the t top ten hammiest video game villain performances of all time. And Ripto would be like right up there, you know what I'm saying? He's he's gotta be. So, thing with Ripto in the second game, I talked about this at length in my Ripto's Rage playthrough. Ripto's Rage is a good game, but I, I always felt like this they kind of set up a rivalry between uh, Spyro and Ripto that just doesn't get what it's supposed to. You know, they don't put enough into it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's supposed to be a thing where Ripto is this big, unstoppable bad guy, and only Rip er, only Spyro can defeat him. And, um, you know, and it's 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 supposed to be like, uh, Nitrous Oxide and Crash Team Racing, where it's just like, he's in the background, you know, kind of overlording the whole game, and, you know, you, you want to... You want to stop him, but the problem with that is, is that they pay all this lip service to Ripto being a big unstoppable villain, but they never show it. They never, you know, like, it sh how it should have been is all of the trouble that was happening in the levels in Spyro 2 should have been Ripto's fault. So, while you're going through levels, not only are you getting talismans and whatnot, but you're also putting a stop to what Ripto has caused. And in turn, that also kind of motivates you to want to defeat Ripto because you've seen how much, what, you know, what he's doing to this world. But the problem is, Ripto is never once referenced in any of the levels in Spyro 2, so you play them and it's just like, okay, so what's the big deal with Ripto exactly? All he really does, in the context of the plot, is lock himself in a castle and throw up a banner. Like, that's all he does for the entire game. I talked to George Bush here. Hey, 
Hey, Spyro, glad you're here. The doors are jammed. I set some explosives, but don't have any matches. My mama always told me that I should never play with matches. Anyway, maybe you can help me with the light. So this is how you, uh, this is where all the cows are hiding from that one farmer we met earlier. So you have to... You know what I really like about this game is the fact that uh, they couldn't get a door animation the way you would expect it. So they, first they had the doors open the wrong way, uh, and then they had them disappear from existence. So I, I really appreciate that about this game. Uh, so now that we have defeated all the enemies and gone in a full circle, a couple other things unlock on the second lap. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get on that. Uh, there should be a cannon around here somewhere. There must be over here. Huh. Alright, well, well, we'll go talk to the to this guy right here, and he will tell us all about his cows. And we will herd the cows back to him. Thanks for freeing the cows! You think you can go get them and move them back here? I mean, there there are a lot of uh, kind of dumb collectathon side missions in video games, you know. But you know what I what I really like about uh, Spiral Enter the Dragonfly is the fact that this this fucking farmer is too goddamn lazy to walk over and grab his cows. Uh, so I I get to spend my time doing it. That's brilliant. It's a it's a commentary on the laziness of the farming industry. It is what it is. Uh, so this 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 game. And you know, it, the fact that it's George Bush who's too lazy to get his cows, or a George Bush look-like, rather, it's just really insightful political commentary on the behalf of uh, Equinox Games. I'm not sure what they're trying to say, but uh, I'm sure it's it's really interesting. Uh, so, cow. Oh yeah, and like I was saying, the George Bush farmers. Uh, in the Hunter mission in Country Speedway, when uh, hunters flying around in a jetpack shooting space sheep and fighting space cows uh, There are farmers that show up uh, During that mission and they look a lot like George Bush farmers. So he 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 these characters actually did appear in Spyro 3 so the more you know All right once you get all the cows over he'll give you a dragonfly. I think I'm still missing some cows Are you kidding me? I mean, of course. If we, if we couldn't make it too easy. Well, where is the last cow? I hope that's not a glitch, because that would be a bad mojo, is what it is. Oh, you must. Hey! What are you doing, you little fuck? Okay, I do not see any more cows around here. No, that's all of them. What's what's he going on about? All right, come on, talk to me, you fuck. Way to go, Spyro. We'll make a farmer out of you yet. By the way, while you were out looking for my cows, I found this here critter and I think it may belong to you. Uh, I just I, that's another thing I love about Spyro Winch the Dragonfly uh, is the fact that um, you, you go through all the work of uh, finishing a side quest and then you're not done because in real life you are never done uh, by the way collision detection it, it you know it just uh, it just makes you appreciate when the collision detection works correctly so uh, just got I've just got to give kudos to that. Yeah, so that that was the problem with Riptail in the first in the second game is that, you know, he had some fun lines. He, you know, Greg Berger was still hamming it up back, even back then. Uh, but the problem was is that, you know, that and there was nothing really there to motivate that animus and make the player really want to beat them, uh, because a plot and b plot was totally disconnected. Uh, like what was happening in the hub worlds and what was happening in the levels were not connected. Is what I'm trying to say. Like. Defeating a yeti in a monastery to help some monks has nothing to do with Riptail at all. So it just kind of makes a lot of the levels come off as redundant and 
Like, it has nothing to do with anything, except insofar as it gives you talismans and orbs to unlock doors. Uh, so, yeah. So, so uh, then we had Sparrow 3, where the sorceress and her evil plan was, like, the exact opposite and much improved over Spyro 2. Like, in terms of setting up the sorceress as a villain who must be stopped, uh, the, Spyro, the writers for Spyro 3 did a much better job of that. She had an army that was in every single level. Um, she kidnapped a bunch of babies and was planning to commit genocide of an entire race so she could live forever. Uh, she was a total bitch to Bianca and her minions. You just had a lot of reason to hate her. Uh, and, and she also captured all of your animal friends that were all playable in that game. So by the time you actually got to fight her, you really felt that animus and you wanted to defeat her. Spyro, I'm glad you're here. I just knew there was something suspicious about this farm. Space cows are everywhere. And now a big UFO is coming to abduct Farmer Dill's cows. There's a prototype tractor beam on this UFO that you can use to beam up the cows and put them into the corral. Hey, wait a minute. How does Farmer John have a UFO? Farmer Dill needs your help. Will you try rescuing the cows with the prototype UFO? You better hurry, here it comes now. Don't let that nasty UFO get a single cow. So yeah, so that's how the, the sorceress was. And uh, if you want more explanation for what I'm talking about here, then uh, uh, please go ahead and watch my Spyro 2 and Spyro 3 playthroughs and I explain it in painstaking detail there. So yeah. Oh, you, you press B to accelerate. So this is kind of a fun mini game, actually. I'm like, I'm not even joking. Where is the saucer? Uh, so basically how this works is you're flying around in this vehicle and uh, this UFO is going to be trying to abduct the cows. And what you have to do is you, you've got a, it looks similar to the flying saucer from Spyro 3, sort of. Uh, is you gotta grab these cows uh, using the UFO and then drop it into this pen here uh, to score a point. And once they're in the, the corral, the, the the big UFO won't go after them anymore for some reason. And you do have to hold the button for a little bit before it will register, so don't worry if it doesn't take right away. Uh, let's see, let's uh, just talk to this guy. And we'll go back over here. Uh, so you, yeah, so that's pretty much all there is to it, but it's a fun mini game for what it is. I mean, it's it's not doesn't take too long or anything. Uh, there's some decent challenge to it. Uh, the controls work just fine. The frame rate's actually stable for once. So this mini game is pretty harmless. And there is a second uh, there is a second challenge after this where it gets a little bit harder. You there will be some other UFOs chasing after you. So. Yeah, I think this minigame's actually pretty alright. Uh, it's not that bad. Because, you know, real talk for just a second. <clears throat> as much as people say Spyro into the Dragonfly sucks, you know? That was this... awesome, Spyro! You saved all the cows! By the way, I found this Dragonfly hiding in the barn. Here you go! Hey, it's Jingles! Did you see that? Farmer Dill forgot to lock the gate and the cows got out! And it looks like there's more UFOs this time! Do you think you're up for another run? Farmer Dill needs your help! Will you try rescuing the cows with the prototype UFO? Watch out for the gold UFOs! Those mean little guys will shoot your eye out! Oh my god. I mean, fantastic. Uh, so yeah, so we're back for round two. And this one's a little bit different. Last time there was just a big gray UFO. Now there are small UFOs chasing after us in addition to the big guy. And they'll shoot at you. They can't kill you, thankfully. But you can see that they're all over the place. We're, there's the big one. Uh, so the, the little UFOs can't kill you, but they can basically do what I'm doing here and knock the cow out of your grasp. And then when they do, that becomes, you know, a little bit harder. Uh, so you do have to... Yeah, you have to make sure that you're killing these things fast enough. 
Uh, and you gotta, you know, keep up and then get the cows back and all that stuff, so. Oftentimes what will help a lot is, uh, trying to kill a few of the, the gold ones before they, you know, get to... Before things get to here. God, shut up, alarm. Uh, you know, I set alarms so that I know when to stop the part. We'll go for a little bit longer. Ah, uh, come on, cow. Ah, oh, God, they won't stop shooting at me. I mean, this this mini game is is fun. Like, it's this this vehicle isn't all that difficult to control, for one thing. And uh, you know, the the mechanics are simple. The rules are simple. Like, what it takes to win is simple. They don't overcomplicate things. Uh, but you know, it can be kind of annoying when you're like trying to like grab the cow yourself, and then you're getting swarmed by bad guys all of a sudden. And it is annoying that the, the, the saucer will not grab the cows right away sometimes. It seems like it takes too, uh, too long for it to do what it's supposed to do. And also, I do not know what is preventing uh, the UFOs from grabbing the cows while they're in the pen. Because that's something that's never explained. Because, you know, couldn't they just grab it out of the pen? I don't really understand. Alright, now let's get this fucker back in before they shoot me down. I mean, it's probably a good thing that they did not include a health bar or, or something in this mode, because, you know, it's kind of like... I could see that getting really annoying, you know what I'm saying? Alright, let's grab this cow here. Come on, Calbert. And then that'll be it, if I can get past these guys. And we did it! Cool! You did it again! Please take my pet dragonfly as my thanks! Make sure to feed her lots of crickets. She just loves them. Hey, it's J Dubs. J Dubs, huh? Do you want to take a spin in the prototype UFO? Thanks again, Spyro. You can come back anytime you feel like taking the prototype UFO for a spin. I'm going to hang out here and watch the skies for space cows. The truth is out there, Spyro. Ugh. So I do like how they, they kind of touch on uh, where these characters were at the end of Spyro 3. Like in Spyro 3, Hunter spent a lot of the game chasing after alien farm animals. And Bianca kind of ditched her master and became her own, you know, betrayed the sorceress and whatnot, but she was still learning magic. And uh, Moneybags went to Spooky Swamp to become a haiku poet and was still talking about his poetry. Uh, so they, I, I appreciate the fact, once again, that they tried to keep with continuity from the first three games, as opposed to Hero's Tale, which just does what the fuck ever. It doesn't seem to care about continuity, so... Kudos to enter the dragonfly for that much, but regardless, that's all the time we have for today, gentles and ladies men. We went a little overboard as it was. Uh, so join me next time in part five, and we will wrap up this crop circle country and maybe start another level. But until then, I'm Exo, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>